Hello again, guys. Good morning. God bless. I hope you all are doing well, strong in the Lord, and quenching those fiery darts, the devil, the wicked one. We know we have an adversary, guys, and he's out to kill, steal, and destroy us. That's his objective. He wants to get us in the flesh. But we that are in Christ walk in the Spirit. We mortify the flesh with the Spirit. We overcome evil with good. And we know he's going to attack us. And let us put on the full armor of God that we're able to withstand in that day. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God has um, put a message on my heart. I would love to share it with you guys today. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, guys. In Matthew chapter 25 is going to talk about um, when the Son of Man comes in His glory. Uh, sitting on His throne. and It's going to talk about the separation of the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. And um, But what really caught my eye is um, he says those that are least you did it you did it to the least of my brethren you did it to me and uh, this hits home I understand more and I grow more in his grace and knowledge daily now guys it's been a week since I've had my wisdom teeth taken out I still have an affliction on my right side um, I have some nerve damage, more than likely, that, you know, man says it's permanent, but I know nothing is permanent in this life. This life is a vapor, but I do know there's a permanent place that I'm going, as he told me in John chapter 14. I know that I'm sealed with the Holy Ghost, and I have confidence that I've put my faith in Christ Jesus, and his love has cleansed and purged my heart spotless. Though temptations will come, we have Christ living in us. Temptation cannot overcome the Son of Man. As he put sin and the devil and the flesh to an open shame at the cross. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. <clears throat> Glory to God. <clears throat> Matthew 25, guys. In verse 33, he says, And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now I want to say this, on my right side of my face is afflicted. Every day it's constant where it's some type of either pain or weakness or burning. Um, and the left side has none of those things. Right now I got a little pain from where the wisdom teeth are, but I, it's, it's a different affliction. And this hit home for me as I was reading this. As Jesus said, though you will go through affliction, the Apostle Paul said, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus, his mortal body. As Ananias laid hands on him, and he suffered many things for his name's sake. He was also afflicted with blindness. He had an infirmity in his eyes. And I don't know if that's what he was praying about in 2 Corinthians, as he prays that the thorn in the flesh would leave him. Um, and Jesus answered him back that my grace is sufficient for thee, Paul, for my strength is perfect in your weakness. Um, but those sheep that are on the right hand, they're afflicted. They're hurt because the world is dark and they just sit on the, they, they're a city that sits on a hill that cannot be hid. They're lights that are shining in this dark and wicked world. They're out to save anybody that is willing. They're out just to, to let their light shine before men. But affliction arises on them, suffering and pain and distress but the Lord Jesus gives us comfort. Hallelujah to the Lamb. 
it says he's prepared, going to prepare a place for you in John chapter 14. And if he's going to go prepare a place for you, then he's going to come back and receive you as his own. Though you may have more, or you may be mourning and be in trials in this life. Remember, those things have to end. Now, the doctors have told me that if it's nerve damage, as long as it's been, it's going to stick with you forever. You're always going to have to battle this. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Because he said that those that walk in the Spirit will inherit eternal life. I may have to battle for a temporal time in this life if it's God's will. If it's God's will, he can take the infirmity away in this life. Whatever God chooses. I've chosen this day whom I shall serve. Moses chose to suffer rather than have all the pleasures of Egypt for his name's sake. He'd rather it, be, it would be better to suffer in this life and reap all the pleasures of eternal life. Guys, it's coming. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Look what he says here. In verse 35, he says, For I... For I was hungry, and he gave me food. I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Affliction, pain, suffering. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? Jesus is going to answer them. You did it in the Spirit. Because you were walking in the Spirit. And you knew those people that were going through trials and tribulations in the Spirit. Those that were letting their light shine before men. And being persecuted for righteousness sake. He said, blessed are they that mourn for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. When do we see you, stranger, and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when do we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The blind, the lame, the sick, those that are put off of the world, they can't do nothing in this life. Those that are more or less neglected. I think of uh, the rich man and Lazarus. As Lazarus was begging at the table, at his feet, for just a crumb. Moreover, the dogs come and lick his sores. Uh, but now the tides have been turned. See, Lazarus was on the right side. Though he was afflicted in this life, he kept his faith, not desiring to be rich in this life, not desiring the pleasures of this life, but he knew it would be better to suffer and reap eternal life than to be in torments, begging for his life for eternity. And look what happens to those that are on the left, those that are like that rich man. Verse 41, then he will also say to those on the left hand, they're not really afflicted in this life. And, and um, they reap just the pleasures of what the world gives them. The rich man wasn't hungry. Jesus said, you did it to the least of these. You've done it to me, my brother. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was naked. I was in prison. You comforted me. In the book of James, he says, perfect religion visits the fatherless and the widow. Those that are hurting from within. As the Lord Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within you, not from without. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Depart from me, you that are on the left. You cursed into the everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. 
I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? We tried to help you. And he will answer them saying, Assuredly, I say to you, as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you were partial. Partiality is a sin. Instead of allowing the man that was dirty, the man that had raggedy clothes, you put him in the back, but the man that had on fine apparel and was wearing gold rings and looked like he was very, very well orchestrated in this world, you set him in the front so that you could look good. You catered to him, but this man you left out. This man was afflicted and hurting and in pain. These will go away into everlasting punishment. But the righteous into eternal life. In Matthew, the 8th chapter. Please turn with me, guys. To Matthew, the 8th chapter. There's two men here that are demon-possessed, and they have legions of demons in them. And Jesus goes and he has compassion on the two men. The two men are in the tombs at night. They're walking naked. They're cutting themselves. They're hurting. They're moaning. They're complaining. They're groaning, Lord. The demons begged him, saying, in verse 31, If you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. So the demons begged him, and he said to them, Go! And when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine. And suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Then those who kept them fled. This is what I want to hit at. Remember what Jesus said about the least. If you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. Enter into the joy of the Lord. These people that kept the, the pigs and that seen Jesus cast the legion of demons out of these two men that were pushed away from the world. There's no hope for these people. They just pushed them off. Everybody separate from them. Just let them do whatever they please over there. Let them uh, just stay away from them. It's, they're, they're a scary sight to us. They had no compassion, no remorse. But their heart pushed them away. Instead of having open arms for him. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Look what's going to happen here, guys, in verse 33 and 34. Those who kept them fled. They went away into the city and told everything, including what had happened to the demon possessed men. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. When they saw him, they begged him. Depart from their region. Terrible. These men that were probably taking well care of the community. Maybe even preachers of the law. I don't know. The Bible doesn't really go into detail. Why would they not have joy? That these men were now in the right state of mind. That these men were not dealing with the demons that were vexing them and tormenting them day and night. Why would you not have love for your brother? Compassion. Mercy. The world is so divided like this today. For he said, I am loved to love your brother. It's the world that blinds us. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, guys. 
It just breaks my heart. He said, those that are least, you've done it to the least of these, my brethren. You've done it to me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. What an amazing, mighty, and powerful God. In His foolishness, and God, in God's weakest moments, the things that look so foolish to man, God, He uses those things to show the strength of His glory and to bring the prudent, wise man down to the ground. Hallelujah. I thank Him every day. He didn't leave me to my pride. That was my destruction. But he took the veil off my eyes so that I could see. For though my sins were many, my sins were wicked, my sins were evil, but his grace lifted me up from the pit. I was a beggar from the dunghill. Lord, I have no hope. I only have Christ in this life, I'm most miserable. But I have you forever, Lord. And he lifted me. Love lifted me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I love you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, guys, verse 2. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience. We should know. We should have the Spirit, and the Spirit groans within us. It groans within us, makes intercession for us. We should know if that person's hurting. We should know if they need help carrying their cross. We should share the love of Jesus Christ. Let us not count our life dear to ourselves, so that we can testify by the grace of God. For I am crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Did Christ count his life dear to himself, or did he give himself as a servant to us and serve his Father's word? Can we commune with that? Can we drink of that blood? Can we eat that flesh? Can we have that love and dwelling in us? Can we not be a judge and give ourselves over to the judge of heaven and all the world? Of the world? Hallelujah. Can we stop holding signs up to the homosexuals and to those that commit abortion? And can we teach them about the love of Jesus Christ instead of holding a sign up and condemning them in their own sin? Condemnation is death. But Christ broke down that middle wall of separation for my sins, their sins, and your sins. I don't need to classify myself other than anything as a Christian. A born-again Christian with a faith in Christ Jesus that now is working through love, letting Christ live through me, quenching the fiery darts of the devil, overcoming evil with good, blessing those that curse me, praying for those which despitefully use me, forgiving them, Father, because who is blind to their eyes? The God of this world, as he had blinded my eyes before, but the true God lifted the veil off of my eyes. Verse 3, but even if our gospel is veiled, it's hidden. It is hidden or veiled to those who are perishing. Those men that asked Jesus to leave without Christ, he said, you can do nothing. He said, I am the door. I am the way. Without him. If you ask Christ to leave from your life because you don't love Him, you don't abide in Him, you don't let that love live in you richly, you don't have the mind of Christ, you don't walk in the Spirit, you don't crucify the flesh, you don't mortify the flesh with the deeds of the Spirit, with the Spirit. 
and you'll perish. You'll be cast into everlasting chains, eternal darkness. Why? Because you allowed who? Verse 4. Whose minds? The God, little g, of this age, this world, has blinded who do not believe They don't believe. They don't believe that love can change them. They don't believe that grace can empower them. They don't believe that they can stand strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We do not believe. Lest the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. They ask the image of God, the one that created them to be should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your bond servants, for Jesus' sake. What does he mean? I'm bearing my body, the marks of the Lord Jesus. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts. Try to change them, really. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Verse 7. We have this treasure in earth and vessel right here. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us, enter his rest, cease from our own works. Because remember, none of us are saved by our own works. Remember, the old man is dead. The new man now has what? Now has the power of God living in them. Because they crucified the old man, and they entered his rest. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. The life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live, always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. The life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Just as they did to him, the good shepherd. They will do to you because the God of this world has blinded their eyes. Satan roars like a lion seeking who he may devour. When he knows that you're going to walk with Jesus, when you're done with this, when you're seeking a country by faith, he's out to afflict you, out to hurt you, put you in pain, and punish you. Praise be to God. For Christ Jesus has overcame. Hallelujah. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Just as it did in him. When you become a part of him, his body, that life that Jesus lived is now going to manifest itself in you in some type of way. But do as Jesus did. Forgive them, Father. Do as Jesus did and heal the ear of his enemies. Do as Jesus did. Reprove and rebuke with what? The word of God, which is love. God is love. Season everything with grace. Remember that you've been saved by the hands of grace and mercy. 
Verse 13, and since we have the same spirit of faith, same spirit that he had in the man had, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Death worketh in us for the glory of God, that life may work in you. Don't push life away. Jesus said, if you try to save your life like those men did, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life, then you'll save it. That's all for today, guys. I hope this message has blessed you richly. Continue to pray. Pray for healing. Pray for the Spirit to manifest itself. I pray that you guys' faith will increase more and more in grace and in the knowledge of grace. We need it. We need an outpouring of the Spirit of grace in this time that we're living in. Uh, we're living in terrible, terrible, tragic times right now. If there was ever a time for the coming of the Son of Man, it would be now. Uh, my prayer is that people would come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved before that day. Because it's going to be a time like never before. I know that God is love and he doesn't want anybody to perish. And um, there's people that I love out there. And they're part of my family. Friends. And I pray that God can open me doors. To share the love of Christ and share the testimony of grace in Jesus Christ. Continue to pray for one another. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I love you guys. God bless in Jesus' name.